I have been sitting here this morning and watching the audience and I have been trying to calculate how much money you spent over the last several days without me. And saying, and saying to myself, how happy I am as Minister of Finance that we will have an increase in revenue in the month of October and November in Dominica. And I must forewarn you, though when the government intends to impose taxation on citizens globally, they do not give you advance notice. But I am giving you advance notice that I shall be instructing the customs department to ensure that you do not go back home with any money in your pocket. <laughs> and I can also say to you that all our ATM machines are functioning. <laughs> so the cash that you brought, if it has been used up, there are machines all over Dominica and you can certainly withdraw. Let me, first of all, recognize, in our midst, Honorable Reginald Austri, our Deputy Prime Minister. <laughs> Honorable Rosen Paul, our Minister for Commerce, Enterprise and Small Business Development. Honorable, Honorable Joseph Isaac, Minister for Climate Resilience, Disaster Management, and Urban Renewal and to thank them for their contributions this morning. Also, my other cabinet colleagues who are all here uh, with us this morning, and they will be available to respond to some of your questions. Let's, let me also recognize Father Charles Martin and to take this opportunity to congratulate him. He too will be awarded Dominica's second highest award of uh, Sister Order of Honor. for his student contribution, uh, seeking to shepherd us to, to the promised land, heaven. His Excellency Steve Farrell, the Secretary to the Cabinet. Also we have here Her uh, Excellency Lauren Banis Roberts, our Ambassador to the United Nations. <laughs> and we have also uh, Ambassador Gregoire, he's our Ambassador to OECS and CARICOM. The permanent secretaries and public officers who are present. Ms. Afinia Benjamin, the coordinator of the Diaspora Affairs Unit. Mr. Sam Raphael, local businessman and owner of Jungle Bay Resort. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, friends all, fellow Dominicans, the media, good morning, good afternoon, good morning. I'm not sure what time is it yet. Still morning. I have been asked to share a few words with you. And I see today as more of an opportunity to share ideas and experiences as a people. We're here as a family. You're not only here to hear from us, we also are very keen to hear on your many profound suggestions as to how we can work together to continue to build our country. But first, I want to thank all of you, sincerely, for the demonstration of commitment to country and family and your love for our country, Dominic. In the manner in which you mobilize and galvanize support for us during our most difficult period after the hurricane, Hurricane Maria. Without you, you the Dominicans living overseas and the extraordinary generosity you demonstrated, we would not have gotten where we are today. And we say thank you very much. And also I see your decision to come here to Dominica is in large measure to continue to make your own contribution. To say to us who are resident here that we will continue to be with, with you as we journey together to build the world's first climate resilient nation 
our country, Dominica. So I'm really grateful to all of you for your commitment to our country. Because I always say that the majority of Dominicans love Dominica. The majority of Dominicans care for Dominica. And the majority of Dominicans mean well for Dominica. And in life, as there was Christ walking the earth as a human being, did everything with absolute perfection. He caused the blind to see, he caused the lame to walk, he raised Lazarus from the dead after four days, yet still he was crucified. Yes. Yet still he was crucified. So the question is, who are we mere mortal beings not to be persecuted by fellow men? But as the prime minister of this country, I take comfort that the majority are with Dominica. So I urge us to continue to be positive because no matter what your perspective is on life, who you support or you don't, which part of Dominica you came from, we must not forget that what we do or say to Dominica will either be to its glory or to its destruction. And when the good Lord comes back, as it is written, he is not going to ask you how many times you prayed. He is not going to ask you how many times you went to church. He is going to refer you to the book of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew. What have you done? What have you done to the list of my brothers? That's what he's going to say. He's going to ask all of us. And the question is, if we say that we are a Christian people, and whether you are Muslim or Hindu, whatever religion, it speaks to the same spirit. What would be our, question, our answer to this question? And I must say I have been touched by the vast majority of them. And we have people who not only provided financial and material help, but they are people who came back to Dominica to engage themselves in the actual reconstruction of Dominica. There are many Dominicans who came back and to help. So rather than criticizing, they came in to make a practical contribution. And I am sure Dr. Lander here, who practices, practices in Trinidad and Tobago as a medical doctor, will not mind me mentioning his name. But this gentleman here, you could stand please so he could know you and see you. He is not a builder. I'm not sure whether he knows the difference between a hammer and a jigsaw. <laughs> but he recognized that Dominica needed help with tradesmen and workmen. And he mobilized teams from Venezuela and from Trinidad and assisted us in the re-roofing of several hundreds of homes across Dominica. <laughs> and it is, it is these are the kinds of things that we need to associate ourselves with if we say that we really love Dominic. Criticizing, anybody can criticize. And it's easy to criticize. And sometimes those who criticize, are, and, and there's nothing wrong with, with constructive criticism. So if, some, if the government is doing A, it is fine to say, well, I do not agree with A, here is B. But, but to say that nothing is happening in Dominica, don't come to Dominica, Dominica is a bad state, is not fair to us. You know, and the fact is I'm happy that so many of you have decided to defy what you have read and come 
And even those who came with a certain level of pessimism and hesitation, when they came, they have gone through the process of an act of contrition. <laughs> and I have read and messages and some of some messages to apologize to say, look, I, I am sorry because I rely on my perspective of Dominica, what I read and what it told me. But having been here, I am the only disappointment I have is that I did not take all my vocation to stay in Dominica. I will not say to you, my dear sisters and brothers, that all is perfect in Dominica. There is still a lot more work to be done in Dominica. But we must not forget that this country, just about one year ago, was devastated by the worst disaster in the history of our country. A country that does not have a godfather, or a godmother, or even adopted parents. We are on our own as a sovereign, independent nation. Yes, we are grateful to many benefactors who have committed financial and technical resources to us. But in large measure, we are on our own. We cannot move the Congress of the United States and say, well, go and pass a bill, an appropriation bill to give us money. We can't do that. And when you look back, if you are honest with yourself, which I know all of us should be, because we are Christians, and you look back on where this country was just a year ago and where we are today, you can't not say thank you, Lord, thank you, Almighty God, for what you've done for them. And I do not know what is wrong if for some people to just say, well, well, okay, well, you know, the country is on the move again. Yes, there's a lot to be done. But to say nothing is happening down Dominica and so on, nothing, nothing good is happening. Well, you know, it's interesting. But we remain focused on the task of building this country. And also give you an idea. Just to clear the streets and roads in Dominica, with all of the debris, we have spent in excess of $120 million. Just clearing to make access to people's homes and properties, to dredge our rivers, over $100 million to dredge the rivers. No, you, don't, you, you won't see you the Dredgler River walking roads all into buildings. <laughs> to just take the debris for Baku and put it in the truck and dump it. Over $120 million. So, and, and, and the dredging is continuing. I'm hoping it can come to an end soon because it is a huge cost. So just for clearing and dredging, over $250 million. And all, every one of these dollars came from the government's treasury. All local funds. We have spent as a government helping people cover their homes. Cover their homes. About $125 million. Not even in big countries people doing that. There are parts of Louisiana, and I'm criticizing the authorities in the United States or Louisiana, but there are parts of Louisiana who were affected by uh, Katrina who never returned. You go to Louisiana, and there's, there's sections in Louisiana that are completely abandoned. People still waiting for FEMA to get them a check. Those of you who live in New Jersey with Sandy, you still have the letter that they gave you. Waiting, and every time you go to them, they tell you something, some other story, some other story, some other story. 
So just to give you the, the sheer cost of reconstruction. So when we saw, when we woke up on the morning of the 19th of September, all of us impacted, including myself, I believe the, 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 the first roof that may have gone is, is well stained. Um, and I left home early morning and we went, we addressed, the, the, the government addressed the United Nations on Saturday. The hurricane was Monday night. And at that time, at that time, just a mere few days after, we declared to the world our vision to create the world's first climate resilient nation in the world. So even while we're trying to find our way through the rubble, the government was in, was, was, had put itself in gear to think about the future. And to think of the reconstruction of Dominica. And what kind of reconstruction would you want to follow? And we believe that that vision of creating the world's first climate resilient nation is something which we must absolutely pursue. We have no choice. Because the reality is, my dear brothers and sisters, is that the weather system, as the scientists are saying, hurricanes and storms will come more frequently and more ferociously, and therefore they will be more destructive. And we've seen it. We've seen it with flooding in Trinidad, we see it in flooding in the United Kingdom, we see it in flooding in the United States. We see it everywhere. That's the reality. And therefore, what do we do to respond to climate change? Recognizing that the causes of climate change are not within our actions. So we have no control over the actions of others. And therefore, we have to build greater resilience. And we're not saying that the storms won't come. What we're saying, when they come, we'll be better able to see them through. And if we're impacted, we'll get back on our feet much quicker than otherwise. And to just give you a couple examples. After Tropical Storm Erica, we declared to you, our citizens and residents, that we're going to build back better. And in the whole concept of building back better, the government explained to the country that when we put this infrastructure down, if we were to be impacted by a storm similar to Erica, we will better be able to withstand it. So we were able to put some infrastructure between Erica and between the advent of Maria. The West Bridge, for example, which we were criticized for. There are some people, they didn't worry about their, their family, you know. Just to play politics, they tried to rush to Roseau and, and jump over the debris to see whether the West Bridge was washed away. <laughs> but you see, when, when God is on your side and you're on God's side, you don't have much to worry about. And by the grace of God, and with the articulation which he handed down to us, the West Bridge stood up firm and solid. Not even the paint on the railings were washed away. Similarly, the bridge that was constructed by the Chinese for us in Layu Park, in Layu Valley, nothing happened to that bridge because we used the, our vision to, to build back better. We are constructing 341 residences for our brothers and sisters from Petit Savan. And at the time of the hurricane, these buildings were under construction. And nothing happened to any of these buildings. Nothing. We have the cables on the ground, the electrical lines on the ground. And so, 
had this community been up and running, occupied, we could have simply brought in a generator there, crank it up, and they would have lights next day. Because the distribution lines would not have been impacted because they're underground. And that is what we're seeking to build in Roseau and the rest of the country. To build greater resilience and the whole concept which predated Hurricane Maria because we had the designs for the Roseau Enhancement Project before Maria. And the whole idea with the Roseau Enhancement Project which we're going to pursue with even greater vigor is that all of the electrical lines, all of the telephone lines will be in underground docks. And those of us who know Rosa very well, when you walk from Astafan or from the police station, immigration department, and you go all the way down to the old market, you'll be walking on one level. There'll be no up and down, up and down, up and down anymore in the city of Roseau when that is completed. And of course, we are building on the river defenses. There were two or three sections that we have to construct and we'll be issuing the contract very soon for these so that we can mitigate against the possibility of flooding in the city. So that, and this is what we will replicate in the rest of the country. So even now, all of our new housing that we're constructing are taking those elements into, into consideration. So you go to Castle Bruce, you go to La Plain, you go to Portsmouth, you go to Lagoa in Portsmouth, and very soon you will see buildings being built in the city because we're going to build about 155 apartment units in the first phase. All of these buildings are taking the resilience concept and vision into consideration. So the, every building we're building will become a hurricane shelter by itself and in itself. With concrete roofs, with weatherproof windows and doors, so that our people can feel safe in, in those buildings. So we're committed to this, and we have made a commitment to build some 5,000 new homes for our, our citizens. 5,000 new homes. And I can tell you, in just less than, uh, just about a year, we have made tremendous strides in that regard. Contracts for hundreds of homes have been signed and work have started. So I'm telling you, don't, don't listen to what's Kerry telling you. Go and drive in Castle Bruce. Go to La Plaine. Go to um, Picard in Portsmouth. Go to Bellevue Chopin. Don't, don't just sit there and listen to what's Kerry telling you. Take a drive. And you'll see these things before your very eyes. So we are, and this will be replicated throughout the country, my brothers and sisters. We also contracted a loan uh, on grants of some 40 million US dollars from the World Bank. And that entire 40 million dollars will go towards the construction of climate resilient homes for our citizens. So we have a comprehensive program for the sheltering of our citizens in Dominic, irrespective of who you are or where you reside. In healthcare, as you know, before the hurricane we started, the construction of the new national hospital. I believe 227 beds with a wide range of existing and new services. Because the whole vision for the healthcare in Dominica is to ensure that we can minimize the need for our citizens and residents to have to be flown out of Dominica. That's the whole vision behind it. And the hurricane came and it stopped work and the Chinese government has, we have resumed work this month, October. So we, we thank the Chinese government for that. But we could have started before, but we had to go through a redesigning of certain elements of the hospital. So the government indicated the Chinese government, and which they agreed to, to have the roofs 
transformed into a concrete design. So the roofs at the hospital, in every hospital building, except the two that were already advanced, will be in concrete. They have also agreed to change the type of windows to ensure that they're that they weatherproof, and also the doors. And there are also, also some issues of functionality um, that the Chinese have agreed to. So having agreed to these things, we are well on our way to constructing this brand new hospital that will benefit every single citizen in Dominica. You know, things like urology, nephrology, cardiology, you know, all of these units will be at the hospital to ensure that we can provide improved healthcare services to our citizens. That's the first phase. We've also negotiated, and the Chinese government has agreed, to a second phase of the intervention on healthcare in Dominica, where the hospital is concerned. And that second phase would include, among other things, one, a helicopter pad. So the helicopter could land at the hospital, pick the patient up, and it would fly the patient to Martinique or wherever, instead of having to drive to the airport. Improved capacity for water storage, and also bringing in on board renewable energy for the use of solar energy to generate the power for the hospital. And importantly too, we will be signing a special agreement with the government of China. Because they brought in a ship here recently, as many of you would have seen. And they, they, they did wonders in Dominica for the Dominican people. And we are going to be entering into agreement with the Chinese government where we, have, we, we are identifying and we have identified the interventions which our Dominican citizens and residents go overseas to secure the most. And we are getting the Chinese to provide us with these expertise to be available on Dominica so that things which our patients would have to go to Martinique and other countries for, we will be able to provide it here for them in Dominica. And in addition to that, in addition to that, we have also get them to agree to have our local doctors go to China for six months or thereabout for refresher courses to be exposed to new technology and new practices and bring this back home to the benefit of our people. Because they, we have to create sustainability, we have to create a transfer of knowledge and skills so that we can become independent as ourselves. And that will also be the same for various areas of nursing intervention. So we are well on our way to transforming the healthcare and the delivery of healthcare services in Dominica. So we're not only concentrating on the physical aspect of the hospital, but also on the services and the service delivery. And I have said to all Dominican people, you see when you come into our hospital, when our hospital finished built, we don't want your pillowcase from your home. We don't want your bed sheets from our home. All the bed sheets and the pillowcases will be all in white to maintain international standards. So stop. Those of you who have your little bed and stuff, hide over when you go to the hospital, start using it now at your homes. Because this hospital will be a state-of-the-art hospital, state hospital and one that will provide optimal and optimum care for our citizens, visitors, and residents. In respect to some critical major infrastructural interventions, the government has taken a decision, and we have in fact entered into an MOU with a firm for the construction of two ports. One, a new modern cargo container port, and we'll, we'll be building this port down at Donkey Beach in Canefield, at the back of the Eight Bank Industrial Estate. And then we will reconstruct the existing Woodbridge Bay into a cruise village with modern duty free shopping. Um, and all of the amenities you will find in a upscale duty-free shop. And the 
whole idea behind the construction of the cruise village is that we believe in the in the interim in the short term sorry we can increase our cruise village or cruise passenger numbers from what it is now to 600,000 and in the medium to long term to take it to 1 million passengers a year and one can appreciate the positive impact on the economy if we were to take our cruise passenger number to one million. The, the other point is in respect to the international airport. Now I can tell you, you'll hear people kicking dust on Facebook and social media about the international airport. I give you the assurance that this government shall build the International Airport for Dominic. <laughs> we are moving apace to acquire the required lands. We have the money to pay the homeowners, the property owners, and I have given them the assurance that once they settle with the government on the price, they will get paid within 48 hours of the agreement. And as we speak, we are conducting more in-depth geotechnical studies to give us a better reading of the soil type in this area to advise on the final designs. And, and in the process, we are securing the financing for the construction of the international airport. So that will come to Dominica at some point under this present administration by the brothers and sisters. As you, you heard from Mr. Raphael, Sam Raphael and others, we are constructing several upskill resorts in Dominica. And these are, not, these are not words, go and drive in Portsmouth, stop at, at, the, at the Coconut Beach, watch on the hill because when you drive past me, you may miss it, stop, walk. Watch up. Don't only watch down, watch up. You'll see it. Go down to the bell hall. You know where bell hall is? Ask somebody if you, if you can remember it. And, and you'll see the edifice that's going up there, the massive construction taking place. And when you drive from Portsmouth, you, you come back and you go down to Soufre. You cannot miss this exceptional hotel that's been built there in Soufre, overlooking the Caribbean and Atlantic Oceans. 120 rooms. 60 of which will be available in April of this uh, next year, opening its doors to visitors. Five star hotels. First time in the history of Dominica we, ha we, we are receiving five star hotels in Dominica under construction, yet to open in 2019. And you want to, and you want to tell me nothing happened in Dominica? Nothing happened in Dominica. Some people just sit in America and, and write foolishness on Facebook and say nothing happened in Dominica. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I will send a ticket for some of them to come to Dominica and see it. With the Fortune Hotel, for example, expanding, not only reconstructing the old wing of the Fortune Hotel, but putting additional rooms. They're going to increase the number of rooms at Fortune by 35. So from 75 plus or 35, you can do the maths. Secret Bay is opening and expanding. So, yes, there is much more to be done, but things are happening, and if we work together, more things can happen. And in the next few weeks, in it, so we have a Marriott in Dominica, you hear that? We have a, we have a Hilton in Dominica, 
We have a Kempinski in Dominica. We have a Jungle Bay in Dominica. Bigger and better than what it was in Dallas. And just to tell you, this afternoon at 4 o'clock, we will have the official groundbreaking ceremony for the Hilton Hotel in Salisbury. So, when I leave you here today, I'll go and get something fast to eat and rush through Salisbury to eat part of the ceremony. And, and it's not only about taking two shovels and turning some sand, you know. Work has started, you know, in the hotel. Work has started on the hotel. Being constructed by a local Dominican from Buffa State who resides in Anguilla. So we are empowering Dominicans. The Marriott in Portsmouth has been constructed by some guys from Portsmouth. Empowering Dominicans. And I can tell you a little story about Sam Raphael. He, he don't mind. <laughs> I know he doesn't mind I tell you that. But you know, you know that, and he may still be, I don't know, but he was on the wrong side. <laughs> I, I don't know. He was on the wrong side politically, but as far as I was concerned, this was a Dominican investor in Dominica. And he didn't come to me. I went to him. And I said, the hotel is destroyed in Delhi's. We shall help you every step of the way to reconstruct this hotel in Dominica. And interestingly, while I am there embracing Mr. Raphael to rebuild his hotel, the leader of the opposition calls him, I, I, I heard him say so publicly, that's why I, I, I can repeat it, calls him to tell him, do not build the hotel. When this party, which I have the honor to lead, was in opposition, we were builders. We were giving scholarships to Dominicans as they were part in opposition. We were bringing doctors from Guadalupe, Dr. Mark Cook, with medication, and we were going house to house in communities to administer health care to Dominicans. We built preschools, we, 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 we paid for students' bus fare, we bought them books, we bought them uniform in opposition. And when Rosie and Mike would go out to Dominica, it was to promote Dominica to get to sell agricultural produce, markets, and so forth. Rosie would go to England. Some of you say England. You go to England and so forth, and Rosie would use his connections for his Black Power days with Bernie Grant and to use that door to get into the British Parliament and the British government and say, look, you must do more for your former colony. Rosie was the first person to cause Dominicans to wear the African garb because he go to Ghana and other countries and bring these African outfits and have, and have um, these beautiful ladies from Buffalo State walking on the stage um, um, modeling. That's what we did. We were constructive. We were constructive. We were about building Dominica. Yes, when, we were, when Mike and Rosie were in Parliament, it's bros and missiles. When they in Dominica. But when they went out, they were Dominican patriots. They were Dominican statesmen. Whenever Rosie had the opportunity to speak with in the mic. Yes. You could never hear Rosie say anything bad about Dominic. Yes. So, you don't have to be in government to make a positive contribution and a positive difference. It comes down, my brothers and sisters, to a simple understanding. 
A simple understanding. And Maya Angelou captured it very well. You know, to lead a people successfully, you must first love them. Yes. Love them. It's not about you not, he's not or she's not a nice person. That's not interesting. Why choose nice people? People interested in people who care about their welfare and well being. Who love them. So we are committed to these ma major pieces of infrastructure and we continue to pray to the Lord that he will continue to bless us and to see these projects come to a successful completion. So when you come back next year, next year for your independence, you'll be staying in a five-star resort. You'll be staying in one of the uh, Jungle Bay, beautiful. I mean, my friend, look. Mr. Raphael will allow you to come into the property and walk around. So you go there and say, hey, I was in the diaspora conference. Sometime you come and see his hotel and so forth. <laughs> go and see the quality of craftsmanship by Dominican people. The stonework, the woodwork, the quality of construction done by our own people down at Jungle Bay. Exceptional work, all done with pride in seeking to build a better Dominica. In respect to you, the diaspora, because I want to end because I would like to hear from you. There's a lot more we can talk to you about, a lot more we can talk about. All we're asking of you, those of us who live here, is for you to be constructive about your country. Be positive about your country. Yes, we may not always agree. You have families, you live together. Sometimes a whole week passes and you don't talk to each other. <laughs> so that's normal human behavior. You know, and if you go back to biblical days, I mean, Cain um, killed Abel out of jealousy because Christ accepted Abel's offering and he didn't accept his offering. I mean, you can't, the, the Bible is, is, is repleted with examples of human failures and human shortcomings. But we must never lose sight. Because, you know, those of you who reside in the United States in particular, you will see the Americans fighting each other. But when they are speaking outside of the United States, you do not know who is Republican or who is Democrat. They're Americans. And if anybody were to say anything negative about their president as much as they may like him or not like him, they will put him in their place. Because for them, first and foremost, they are Americans. And I have read the oath which some of you took. to become American citizens. <laughs> Why I say, well, that oath deadly. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The oath says, I shall take up arms. Arms. Not, 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 not this day, not arms, you know. In defense of the United States of America. And I am not telling you, I am asking you here today, to take up arms in defense of Dominica, I am saying to you to be simply positive about your country, Dominica. And I will say, and I will say finally to the minority who spend the time chastising the country and attacking the country and in the process attacking it. As Prime Minister, let me say to you that no matter what you say or do on social media, that is not going to take this government out of office. So, so if, if that is your objective, We have already called upon the good Lord to rebuke it. 
And as he has answered our prayers four times straight, I see he answered our prayers five times more straight. So I can tell you, I can tell the minority who are there that you have a lot of typing to do because you're going to do that for another 20 years. Another unbroken 20 years typing, typing, scary this, scary that, scary it must go, scary it must go. Because the, the majority of Dominicans, the vast majority of Dominicans, appreciate what this government continues to do for the people of Dominicans. And I will say to you finally, as I've said to those of us who re reside here in Romney, that the international community, the World Bank, the European Union, the British government, the government of Canada, Japan, China, etc., Venezuela, etc., etc., are not helping us because we were hit by a hurricane. You guys look like, oh, what's Terry talking about there? <laughs> they're helping us because they are excited by the expressed vision of this government to create the world's first climate resilient nation. And even when I made that announcement on behalf of the people of Dominica at the United Nations, many of them were perplexed. They were dumbfounded to say, well, this little country, Dominica, we can't find on the map. <laughs> it wants to punch much higher than it can reach. But we know from our lived experience with this hurricane that we have but no choice but to pursue a resilience path. And I give you the commitment that while it is more expensive to achieve, it is beneficial in the long run for all of us. And it may take a little more time than to just patch up something. To reconstruct something will take time. And therefore, we are prepared to invest the political capital into this because we believe it is in the best interest of Dominica. And it is not the first time that this government has been challenged. We were challenged when it came into office to restore the financial integrity of our country. We went to the IMF program and we ended up being successful at it. And let me tell you, notwithstanding the fact that your country, our country, was impacted by 226% of the GDP. And for several months after the hurricane, we earned not one dollar in taxes. We, this government, because of the prudent and responsible manner in which it has conducted the affairs of this country over the last several years, has not defaulted on one payment of his loan to anybody. As a matter of fact, when I went to Washington to meet with the World Bank to negotiate for the financing, I asked them, have you checked your account in respect to our payments? They all smiled. Because in a matter of just a few days after the hurricane, we paid the World Bank monies that were due to it at the end of September. <laughs> and in any disaster, anywhere in the world, whether you are a developed country or a developing country, anywhere in the world, government would lay off workers. You go to St. Thomas, they may, they, the governor there is my personal friend, and it is just a reality. You love people. In Puerto Rico, in Houston, Texas, several federal and state and city employees lost their jobs. 
but in your small country, Dominica, not one public servant has lost his or job since the hurricane. And in addition to that, they have all gotten paid on time. Look, look at this. The month just and yesterday, you know. Yesterday, you know. And they got paid on the 23rd of October, you know. Yesterday. Tell me, would the Queen pay you so early? From Her Majesty's Treasury? No. no. Because you have to be paid for your full days. But we pay them a whole week in advance. And it is not because, my dear brothers and sisters, we have plenty of money. Because we need plenty more money. It is because of the manner in which we have managed the affairs of Dominica. <laughs> so, the point is, if these things are being done, and, I mean, what is the change about? <laughs> to do what? We went to China in 2004. We established relations with China. We were criticized. Now everybody in China these days. Everybody in Chinese food. I mean, so what changed? But I'm happy to see you. And we are very... Boy, I care about many, many more of you came this time, eh? That's nice. We really, really appreciate it. And don't forget why I told you earlier, you know. If there's anything you live here with today, what I have said, is that you spend all your money. That, that is the easiest thing to remember. In all that I've shared with you this morning. Don't uh, spend your money. Because, you see, you see, when we go overseas and we want to buy something in a store in the United States, we convert it to EC and say, but it's expensive. But now that you have purchasing power, that thing cheap in Dominica. So you're spending money. Okay, but thank you very much. We really appreciate you coming. We really appreciate you. And let me tell you something. As long as I am Prime Minister of this country, and based on what people are telling me, it will be for a very long time to come. We shall defend your right under the Constitution of Dominica to vote in Dominica election. We will defend your right because it is a right and there is no institution in this country that has any legal or constitutional authority to remove your name on the voters list unless you are a dead person in Dominica. Because voting is too much of a, an important fundamental right. People die to vote. People shed blood to vote. And we want to go back to the days where only landowners could vote in Dominica. No way. We're making progress and we have to be progressive in our thinking and we can't go back to old days. Those who want to go back to old days will stay where they are and we'll continue to move forward. God bless you, my everybody and sisters.